Welcome, everyone. Hello. Uh, I'm Luke from Covalence. I'm a content creator and instructor here. I'm returning with another enlightening episode of my TypeScript Tips series, this one talking about our good friend, the generic. In this episode, I'm going to unravel the concept of generics, their role in TypeScript, and how they're going to streamline your coding experience. Whether you're just starting out in TS or you're already on a, this journey as a seasoned dev, then hopefully this can demystify, clarify, or even just show you one thing you didn't know, which is what typically happens when you've been coding in it a while. And as a matter of fact, making this video, I learned one or two new things about TypeScript generics myself. Before I dive on into the content of the video though, remember we do have a community membership available here at Covalence just for $25 a month. You get access to a treasure trove of coding resources, team support, and our Discord, including me, my lovely self, me, myself, and I. I'm available in Discord to help you along with your coding journey, your adventure, whatever you want to call it. We're going to have exclusive coding events for community members and all of our other students, uh, help with building your resumes, portfolio pages, lab ideas, things like that. You also get access, more importantly, to our front end, back end, and my personal standalone React course, all three combined together that build our full stack development course. So if you have an interest in learning how to build full stack CRUD apps from almost near scratch, then this course is for you. So uh, check it out. It's an, it is a link available in the description down below. So with that out of the way, uh, remember I have a lovely VS Code window here open with a simple uh, TypeScript project running. You can go ahead and use a code sandbox, clone this repo from the description in the link down below, or just start your own coding, your own project that you install TypeScript and use to follow along with this video. So generics are a feature of TypeScript that allows us to write flexible and reusable code. This is a meme across all of my videos. That's the point of TypeScript without sacrificing type safety. They're kind of like placeholders for any type that can be brought in as kind of like a variable. So think of it as a variable for a type, whether you're talking about uh, interfaces, classes, functions, anything. It is a placeholder, an argument to a function like can be anything we want it to be passed in. This can be thought of as an argument for a TypeScript type. So in programming, we, action, we often write functions or classes that can work with different types. But if we're not careful, we could lose those benefits of TypeScript, uh, TypeScript statics typing if we're not if we're not kind of coding poorly. That's where generics come in. They enable us to write code that will maintain types of variables while still being uber flexible. So the point here being is that, let me go ahead and close that window out and write our first function, identity. Uh, if I say identity can be passed in an argument that will simply return that argument to me like such, man, my fingers don't wanna work today even after writing a whole bunch of code. I can say that argument can be of type any and will return of type any. Now, while this gives me extreme flexibility, I can pass in a number, a string or an array or an object, it doesn't matter. Any combination of that I want, it will take it as an argument and return well in any type, meaning it doesn't ensure any kind of type safety. So while this is no effectively better than vanilla JavaScript, it is, without a doubt, incredibly flexible. I can pass in any arc and get it back and have no problems, but I have no type safety. So instead of doing something like this, we can actually pass in a parameter to this function that is of T. T. This stands for the keyword type. It is just a placeholder, a variable, an argument, a parameter, however you want to think about it. It is nothing more than a placeholder for a type we're going to choose to pass in as a parameter to this function. And now I can use that type T across my arguments and my return types if I need to. So now I can call identity and pass in a number of one or a string value of hello, and it will be able to infer those types my, itself correctly, right? I can even pass in using this declaration syntax to say, hey, in this case, my type will be a number. Hey, identity, in this case, my type will be a string. Now I've told TypeScript that identity, this function is passing in a type of number. The argument matches with that type as well. And the return type would be of number as well. It recognizes that output should be of type number. If I move it down to this part of the code, it will recognize that output is of type string. So here we've maintained type safety without losing flexibility. We can pass in a type that will be, again, variable based on what we need. I don't have to write an individual function now. I don't have to write identify string, identify number, identify string array, identify number array, identify object, identify object array. I can make a singular function that can take any kind of type and do the proper code with it without losing type safety. So again, flexibility and type safety is the marriage that generics bring in for us. This is a really simple example. Let me show you something a bit more complex where we can say get last item of type T is gonna take an argument. The argument is gonna be a T array. So an array or whatever our type we pass in is, and it should return the last thing of the array, which should be of type T. 
So we're going to say return items dot length minus one. And I should probably write, not items, I said arg. We're going to say arg. What am I doing items here? I'm thinking ahead. So arg right there of our arg length minus one should be the last thing of our array. So I can now call let last num equal a get last item call of type number. I need to pass in a number array for this to be happy and voila, it knows that the last num will be a number. I'm passing in a type of number. Uh, the argument needs to match T array. So I need to have a number array and it's gonna return the last element, the value three and it's position two, which should be last num as a number. I could also call this and switch this to a string, call this lastra get last item of my string array of A and B and C. So the same thing, I'm passing in an array of strings of type T, type T being string. So this is how you actually declare the type that's gonna be used. Remember, this is like a parameter, an argument, a placeholder we're gonna be using at a later date and time. The later date and time is right here on line six. We pass in a string for type T, which means the argument must be a T array, a string array, and the return type will be of type T, AKA the letter C from my array. Again, flexibility and type safety. Uh, beyond using them in functions like I've been showing y'all here, they are insanely useful when it comes to classes as well, if you're a fan of object-oriented programming. Uh, we can have, I don't really care what this does, public content type T there. So there's our simple, simple class. This is how the syntax looks for passing in a type, a generic type to a class object in TypeScript code. Now I can make a, uh, let's say, let num contain equal new container, instantiate a new container class passing in the value 42. It can infer that the value 42 is my type, but again, we are good little boys and girls. And we're going to go ahead and code uh, the actual passing in of the type right here. So we're going to pass in type number and it recognizes this class will contain an, a con <laughs> create a new class instance of container that will be of type number and the content parameter or argument to the constructor function will also be the same type, AKA a number. And now I can also write one for strings if that's what I wanted to do. And voila, we now have all of our juicy type safety by using container for both string and number types without, again, flexibility, <laughs> meme, meme time, get in the comments, flexibility and type safety. That is the marriage that we're doing here, right? So this is something I actually learned. I mean, I've seen it before, but I never took it to heart until I had to explain it in a video, AKA preparing a script for this video I had here, where I knew about this, but for some reason, I always forget you can use it here. I can have an interface that takes a generic type. I can have a pair of properties that of our type T. So instead of having to write an interface called pair strings or pair numbers, for example, I can have an interface that can represent one or the other based on what I need it to do. Let pair O nums be of type pair of number types. It's gonna be assigned the value of first, one, second, two, voila, we now have type safety and flexibility hashtag meme that is going on right here. I can pass in a generic type to my interfaces, which is something I forget I can always do. So thankfully I made this video explaining it to y'all, which in turn also helped me in the long run, reminding me that this is a cool trick you should know how to do. Beyond that, you should also know that you can use them in return or in a type aliases, where I can say return item will be of type T it's gonna be a function that returns that type back to me. That's all it does. It's a simple function that returns a type back to me and that's all this type alias is. So I can say let return num of type alias return type, which will be returning to me a number type. Just be a function that will do an ES6 shorthand return of 42. And voila, it's all happy and recognize return num is of type number. I can also say this type string 42, change this to a string to pass in for my type T and voila, my type alias is happy again. Again, generics allows us to write reusable and type safe code. Flexibility, type safety. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, so something else that's really important about them is that you're not limited to one type. You can pass in as many as you want. Remember, these are parameters. We can make up as many as we want and call them whatever we want, but typically you see T and sometimes U as the common two if you have them. So if a function called combine, it can take a type and a second type. Look at that, multiple types being passed in. I can have the entire alphabet in here if I wanted to as parameters for my types. 
arg1 will be of type t, arg2 type u. Voila, I now have two different kinds of arguments. It's going to return an array of arg1 and arg2. So it takes two arguments and returns them into an array. So I'm going to say type t in position 1, or 0 rather, and type u in position 1. So I can now call combine and say parameter 1 will be a number, parameter 2 will be a string, 1, 2, and voila. It recognizes that my types are combined. I'm passing in a number for t and a string for u. arg1 needs to be a number, string or arg2 needs to be a string. It will return an array to me of number and then a string, and it recognizes that. So again, if I do output zero dot, there's all my number stuff. If I do output one dot, there's all my string stuff. That's where I love IntelliSense TypeScript really kicking it up a notch. Bam! Emerald Legacy style. It boosts our autocompletes by using this cool concept here. Uh, there are some cool... There's a lot I want to talk about this. I'm, again, another second video coming up after this. And I'll tell you all what it's going to be in the interest of time here. Only 11 minutes. Uh, yeah, so we can actually add constraints to our generics uh, that restrict the types that can be used with it. This is done with our good uh, keyword, the extends keyword. So watch this. I can write a function called get property that takes a type T. Now type T can be anything we want, but it needs to be an object. Yeah, let's do this for now here. Uh, here is where we're going to have some fun. There we go. And it's going to return type T with a at least one property called prop. And I'll say boom. Now it's happy. So this right here, T extends prop colon any means that T should be a type that has a property called prop, right? So it doesn't matter what we call get property with as long as it's an object that has the keyword prop of value any. I can now include any other property I want, such as pizza and say true. It doesn't care. It says T of this type, right, that we're looking at right here must be an object with a singular property called prop on it. So if I change this to props, it is now upset saying, hey, that's not going to match here, right? Did you mean to write prop on it? Or if I write um, car one, it's like car, yeah, it needs to be at least prop on there, homie. So the argument, the, the error we're seeing here is that this object needs to have at least one property called prop that is of any type, which happens to match this right here. So that's something cool you can know how to do. You can say, hey, it can be any type as long as it matches this simple structure. So now it can be an object of any length as long as it has this one property. Again, something else that I forget I can do with generics that is a very cool thing to know how to do. And then finally, we can extend this concept a little further to ensure certain methods exist on the generic type. We're going to make an interface. We're going to call it has length. It's going to have a length property of type number. And what we're going to write here now is a function called get length that will take a uh, generic of T that extends my has length interface, right? So it has to be something that has a length property whose value is a number. The item or argument we're going to pass in will be of type T, and ultimately, if it's getting a length of something, it needs to return a number value from this function. So there, here's how we're taking the concept we just learned and extending it, joke and pun intended, uh, a little bit further. So now that I have this, I can return, theoretically, the item.length, meaning this is now a flexible type safe function for both strings and arrays, but not something else that doesn't have a property called length. So if I try and console log, or just, I don't need to console log anything. If we just call get length and I pass in hello, that string uh, has a property called has length that has a property length value number. So that is all fine and dandy. It's happy that it can do that. I can pass in an array of numbers, for example, and we know that arrays have a property called dot length whose property value is a number. And now I can pass in, say, just a singular number as 10, and it is not happy with us because numbers do not have a type of property of length, aka our interface has length. So once again, in the get length function, t extends the interface has length. It ensures that the input item has a length property. This is a powerful tool that can help catch errors at compile time by ensuring certain properties or methods exist on types that we're using with our generics. So again, very cool stuff you can do here. Uh, yeah, so honestly, like best practices, I guess, uh, trying to wrap up this video here without taking too much time. Uh, maintaining type safety is a priority. Generics provide a great way to 
create reusable components that work in a variety of types while still maintaining type safety. Again, generics allow us to write highly flexible meme hashtag reusable code that allow us to maintain type safety. That is the big purpose of them. I don't have to write 10 different get length functions based on their inputs. I can write one function that can take a myriad of inputs as long as they match a certain type for us. So you're gonna use generics when type in question is not known until the function is called or the class is instantiated. You're gonna use generics when you wanna enforce relationships between multiple inputs or between input and output. And you're gonna use the extends keyword when you wanna enforce the generic type meets a certain uh, contract, if you will. Uh, don't use them in overly complex generic signatures. So th while they provide a lot of flexibility, they can also make your code harder to read if used excessively. Like as a TypeScript newbie, this definitely seems convoluted. So be careful when you're using them. Uh, be careful with your any type, like when I did the prop colon any, it was a terrible idea. Generics should not be used as a workaround to avoid type checking. Use any type with generics and it can defeat their purpose, just like using anywhere any in your, anywhere in your TypeScript code. Don't use it, don't overuse your colon any's, right? That's the general idea. Remember that generics are not available at runtime. This is a development time checking tool only that doesn't uh, that does not persist into transpiled JavaScript code. And don't forget about type inference. TypeScript can often infer the type of a generic function argument, so explicit type annotations may not always be necessary. So again, as you saw from my simpler examples, this might be needed for the has length property, but earlier when I had like get last item T, TypeScript is strong enough to infer that I'm passing in an array of strings or an array of numbers and know what that return type would be without me having to write it all. So sometimes the verbosity can just be replaced by simple inference. Yeah. So uh, in the next video for types, again, this is already long enough as is, I will talk about some really cool generic utility types that you can use, such as partial, read-only, um, record, and pick are ones you could do. So I wanted to have them in this video, but it, I feel like they uh, need to go in a second video. So watch out for a second video on uh, generics that will also bring in the cool generic type utilities that are available to us, so I don't spend another 10 minutes talking about it here. That wraps up this quick dive on generics and what you can do with them. These versatile tools are instrumental in creating flexible, maintainable, and type-safe code. I can't believe I wrote this this many times in my in my own script here. This is an embarrassment, right, in this, that phrase. Flexible, maintainable. I need to just make this into some kind of meme text that appears on the page and actually start editing my videos, but... Yeah, hopefully this uh, deep, this quick dive, not deep dive, quick dive, shed some light on generics. If so, give it a thumbs up, share your comments down below, or any questions you might have or additional content that you want me to make in my TypeScript tips series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more TypeScript tricks and videos and other build videos and everything else we put out. And thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.